We are back with another exciting lineup of Cardinal Sports. The show will start with men's basketball season getting underway. Then we will move into a discussion on the football team. And finally, we will end with a new segment called Dog of the Week. All that and more coming up next on Cardinal Sports Live Plus. to Cardinal Sports Live Plus. I'm your host, Jack Johnson, and joining me, as always, are my analysts, Alex Jackson and Carter Campbell. Are we excited for the show, guys? Basketball and football today? Are you kidding me? Man, I'm Let's hyped go. to be here. We're I'm back. I'm so excited. Last episode, I feel like I was just like, oh, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm energy back with was the energy. Down. We got some sports going for us. Like you said, football, basketball, and then dog out of week. Man. I'm hyped, man. What about you? Dude, it's great to be here. I'm so happy. I'm energetic. It's been a long day, but I get to end it here with you guys. This is going to be great. It's going to be great. I mean, a long week. Let's, let's cap it off with some Cardinal Sports Live Plus right here. So Do it. Let's get right into it with men's basketball officially underway now with their first game taking place on Tuesday against Goshen College. What were our takeaways from that victory? Well, first, I'm happy we won. Hung 100. A, feels good <laughs> to we, say. Yeah, hung 100, and we and our sports team, we won a game. All state oh. won something. That's awesome. I'm excited. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm excited that basketball's back for college because I love college basketball. But not only that, Ball State, like I said, we got a win and we played a good game. Almost perfect game. Uh, it was a rocky start, though. I'm not going to lie. Got into foul trouble a little too early for my liking. But, you know, it was like seven fouls in the first 10 minutes of that game. And, and the, the score was closed for a little while. But we. Uh, we took it away. We, we went on an absolute run. We shot the three well. We were great from the charity stripe. And just the ball movement was great. We were finding people open. We are playing great defense as well. And, I mean, that 27-0 to, to 0 run at the end of the first half was, I mean, that just put the game away. We didn't have to go into the second half. End it there. But, yeah, but I just it was exciting to watch. It was exciting to go on that run. So, what do you think, Carter? I think overall it was a great game. You know, you saw a lot of depth overall. Uh, we had 43 points off the bench. You know, that's big for you, especially early in the season when you can see that you have stuff coming off the bench that's producing at a high level along with your starters. So very strong. Uh, we were also very strong off the fast break. 21 fast, 24 fast break points. Uh, so we were able to build off of mistakes that they made, which is very big going into the season. You have a lot to see. And I'm, I was overall just pumped. Yeah, great yeah. game, great win, starting off the season right. I'm excited for this full season, this kickoff with Ball State basketball. Yeah, like, like you said, capitalizing off mistakes. They, they had 26 turnovers. We forced 26 turnovers. And, uh, I mean, that's very one-sided. So that's how that's, – we probably won it there. But just like I said, just we had four scores in double digits. And, uh, I mean, Bashir, dog. Come on, man. Oh, Can we already start this off? Bashir, dog, dog. 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 Come on, Jalen Anderson is another one. And then uh, – Micah Bell, another dog, and just uh, and then Jerika, Z man, I'm gonna butcher this. I apologize. Uh, Zagorsak, Zagorsak, yeah. but he is the Croatian sensation. 100%. Trademark that, by the way. But it just the team looked great. I'm so excited. Uh, I know you have some stuff on Bashir, so I'm gonna let yes. you run. 21 points, Bashir led the team. He is going to be your leader this whole season long. He's the more experienced. He's one of the two returners that were mostly used last year, and that's really big for you, especially when you have such a young team. This team is young, but they're strong. But Bashir is leading something that's big. You know, three blocks, four rebounds, 21 points. He shot, I believe, 50, 57% from the field. Uh, that's big, especially when it's, he's going to be your leader. If he's the one leading the charge, he's shooting over 50%. Awesome. That's what you need. That's the guy you're going to look to in clutch time. So every time it looked like every time he touched the ball, he's gonna score. Hundred percent. I mean, sitting at the point, he was he was sitting at that rim and just going ham on these guys. It was great. Yeah. Oh yeah, man. He definitely. I mean, Carter and I were there. We saw he was great. He game. was getting big in the post. Yeah. It, it was great to see. But uh, Ball State will be back in action with a tougher matchup against Old Dominion today. How can we continue our success from game one? And what should we look out for against the Monarchs today? Well, I think uh, it's going to be tough. It's going to be a tough game, Old Dominion. They're Sun Belt Division. So, you know, that's 
the experience that you know you told you don't have you know coming out of a Mac but at the same time you're strong you're coming off hanging 100 on a, a team called Goshen but still you hung 100 on them uh, but they're they're also very experienced they have six returners compared to our two that's something that you have to work with but also I want to say we have two strong freshmen Mason Jones and Trent Middleton Jr. who both scored nine points for us and came off strong that's something that's big they're going to be experienced they're going to be building off of something from a strong first game, have that experience under their belt now where you can look at them to take charge against this game against Old Dominion. So I think that's going to be great. They also have a very strong backcourt, Old Dominion does, with Chauncey Jenkins and uh, Bryce Baker. Uh, they both had 16 points and 12 points in their first win. Uh, they're 53% 50 from the field, so they're not the best shooters, but they distribute the ball well and they know how to get the job done. Yeah, like you mentioned, Chauncey Jenkins, he's a leading scorer so far, obviously. It's one game in. He had 16 <laughs> points. But I would like to mention, they only beat Virginia Wesleyan by 14. I mean, that's uh, not good. Not, not the best, but a win's a win in my book, always. And, uh, but like, like he said, they, uh, they, they don't shoot. I, well, they, they get the ball out. They, they distribute yeah, well. They distribute. But they don't shoot the three well. No. They're good from the charity stripe. What we need to do is not get into foul trouble like we did last game. When we get out ahead of ourselves and we get sloppy in the first going of the game, that's how we're going to make mistakes. That's how they're going to drop it on us. Because 68% from the charity stripe, that'll, I mean, that's, that's how you get out early in front. So, but honestly, the, the keys to the matchup there, don't turn the ball over and force turnovers. Um, and, and just don't get sloppy. And if you could out shoot them like we shot last game from three, and they obviously, they don't shoot the, they don't shoot the three well, that, that's, uh, that's a key to victory to me. 100%. I also think you have to lock down uh, their Oregon transfer, Tyrone Williams. Yeah. Uh, that's First of all, he's coming from Oregon, so that's how you know. And he's off the bench, bench, so he's tough. He's, he's, yeah. he's tough he's off the bench. Six, he scored 16 points off the bench. Yeah. He's, he's going to be a tough lockup. Um, but the thing is with them, while he ha he's, that's their only guy that's good coming off the bench. They have no depth other than, like, they have their five starters, and they have Tyrone Williams and one other guy. That's it. They, you know, they don't have the depth that we do where we're building off of so much stuff. But we also, what we need to do for victory against these guys is we need to score off these turnovers more. You know, we had 26 turnovers, but 24 points off the fast break. If we can capitalize more on those turnovers and get more fast break points, that's going to be big against these guys. And we need to build momentum from this 100-point win. Yeah, 100%. I completely agree. Well, that game will be taking place at 2 o'clock in Worthen Arena today. And moving on from basketball to football, we saw our Cardinals back in action against Northern Illinois on Tuesday night. What reaction did, did you guys have from the team's final midweek action? I'm just happy to get a win, man. I'm so happy to get a win. A win is a win. Hey, a win a you, win. Know, you know, that's what I say on here. But like I said, it's just, it's so, it's so nice to come on here and not have to be like, yeah, you know. We got beat up on again. <laughs> Football team we lost. Yeah. We're done. Yeah, <laughs> just it, it definitely brings the morale higher for us, and obviously in that locker room, um, it's a good confidence booster at the end of the year. If you didn't have a great season, there's a lot of you can point a lot of fingers. Y'all, you want to point it at the coach, production on defense, whatever you want to do. You got to win here, and that I feel like a lot of that goes away at least for the week. And just I mean, we played a great game. Fantastic. I think game. this was our best game of the season by far. And, and obviously, we've only won a couple games. So. <laughs> we only had a couple of them that I'd say were, were good performances. But the defense played great. Uh, we, were ten, oh, we, we forced them to be thir three for 10 on third down. So efficiency on third down was great. We were 10 for 18 on third down. So like I said, efficiency is what held us afloat. And just Kyle Kelly, who would have thought? Because I remember coming on up. here. <laughs> we came on here a couple weeks ago, and we're like, who is the quarterback going forward? And we we said say Lane, Lane Hatcher. Lane Hatcher. And this guy. Kyle Kelly was the guy that's going forward, and, and, I, I think, and I think it was a great decision. I think it's a fantastic decision, think, especially for more going into yeah. the year and hey, then next year as well. I was scared. Obviously, we've seen it all year, the, the option, and it's getting swallowed in the backfield. We couldn't run the ball. Marquez Cooper really wasn't getting so much production, but that all went away in this game. Uh, Tanner Cozio had himself a day, had himself a game, three reception, 22 yards, and a touchdown. So, And obviously, the man of the, the, man of the hour, Kyle Kelly, had two total touchdowns, 15 for 25, 115, and then uh, 14 rushes for 66 yards. So he held himself and the team afloat, as well as our defense. And then Marquez Cooper, we expected it at some point, was going to get the hot hand. He's going to get hot to the feet. We're going to get under him. He's going to get 
pushing and moving, but 25 attempts, 93 yards. Had himself a Need day. That. Had himself a day. And can we not forget the defense? Three turnovers, three fumbles, four forced One, fumbles, two, but only three or four three. recoveries. Love it. That's a, that's a tough performance out of our defense. And we didn't turn the ball over. That's what I like to end my thing off with is we didn't turn the ball over. Thank you. <laughs> Love it. Well, I 100% I agree with you. Overall, great win by the team. You know, offense was strong, defense was strong. We held time of possession 34-50. We, we controlled that entire game, the entire time. There was not a second of the ball game where we did not have momentum, have possession of the game. We're not controlling it at our own pace. We held it the entire time. Our defense, two sacks, and like you said, three fumble recoveries. We were able to get back to that quarterback. We were able to get that ball back when we need it. Hell, Kelly. Two touchdowns on the day, one rushing, one through the air. 115 yards th through the air. He put up 100 yards through the air. The guy who runs the option all the time <laughs> through the ball. We, you need that. Yeah, That's big. Because if, he, if it's showing that he has the arm strength and can throw the ball, you have so many more weapons now. With, with Cusio, you can throw it to him more. You can run that option more. You can run it with Marquez Cooper, who's finally get his production that you need. 21st downs. They were 10 for 18 on third down. Like you said, they were able to get the ball past that 10 down marker, and that's what you need. Yeah, I mean, there's not really not much else to say. I mean, we look great. I love it, man. It's, as you guys said, it's just nice to win one. But as the season continues to progress, we are getting closer and closer to the championship game season. Even though we have not seen the success we were looking for from Ball State, there's still much to talk about in the rest of the MAC. In just less than a month, the MAC championship will take place once again in Detroit, Michigan. With all that being said, I must pose the question, who do you guys think is going to be playing in December? I 100% think it's going to be Toledo versus Miami of Ohio. Uh, Toledo's got it by a long shot, to be honest with you. I know I make a lot of predictions, a lot of strong ones, and sometimes they are Oh, they are god-awful, but I'm sticking with this one because I think Toledo is overall one of the best teams in the MAC that we have. 8-1, uh, and one, they are just dominant. They beat the crap out of Eastern Michigan like yesterday. It was bad. Absolutely murdered them at home, and it, was, it wasn't even close. Uh, but I think overall they're the best team. But Miami of Ohio is showing that they can produce at the same level as Toledo. They only lost the f by four. 5 4 to Toledo in the prior matchup. So that's something to look at. If that becomes your max championship, that's going to be a good game. It's going to be a close, good game. It was close in early, uh, earlier in the season. Obviously, they played it. It's 21 17. And uh, we're looking for another big time matchup. I'm also the same. I'm on the same, uh, same here Miami of Ohio versus Toledo. But Toledo's just, they're too good. They're I dominant. mean, when I, I, I come out here, I say balance. They're a balanced team. Well, everyone's balanced. <laughs> this is the team that's balanced. Their O line's great. Their D-line's great. Their offense moves the ball. Their defense gets turnovers. They get stops. That's, that's football, and they do it at a high level. They're, they're the elite team in the MAC, and they're going to take it home. I mean, 34 points a game, and then they hold their opponents to 19. Yeah. I mean, that's a winning formula if you ask me. It just They don't give up sacks, and they, they get sacks. Mm -hmm. that's, that's all I got to say. Toledo. You're looking at the MAC championship. Congratulations. I'm already handing you the trophy. There you go. Man, That's, I love they're it. They're the team of the hour, team of the I year. Well, like I mentioned earlier, Ball State has not had the season we've been looking for with the Cardinals being eliminated from bowl contention in their loss against Bowling Green. What have your guys' thoughts been about the season, and what can we take away from it moving forward? Obviously, it wasn't what we, uh, expe what we wanted. I don't know expectations-wise it could have been. I mean, you know, expectations weren't high, I'll say that. But <clears throat> at the end of the day, there's stuff to build on, especially these, these games at the end of the season. I feel like we weren't as bad as we were as we were in the beginning. Like, we picked it up. The, the win-loss column won't show it, but production will. And what we did defensively, we picked it up at the end of the season. Third down efficiency, uh, it got a lot better as the season progressed on defense and offense. So we got our guy, Cal Kelly. At the end of the year, we've seen that. So thankfully, I wish we had started. <laughs> but who knew? Who knew? I, we not honestly, me. We no, didn't no. know. Not we didn't no know. We thought Lane Hatch was going to be the guy. That guy is the, was gone the next week. So what, what do we know? But uh, I, like I said, there's, there's stuff to build off of. And uh, if we do that the next season, hopefully we build off of those things. 
we could have a, a turnaround year. But at the end of the year, wasn't what we wanted. Win loss column wasn't great. We uh, obviously aren't in bowl game contention, so that's uh, not what we wanted to, to hear. But wasn't a complete dumpster fire. It could have been worse. Always nice. It could have yeah, been worse. Could've we could have not won a game. So <laughs> well, we got some wins at go. the end yeah. of the stretch. So um, take it away. I 100% am going to agree, you know, wasn't what we wanted. You know, you're looking at three wins so far through the year. Uh, hopefully now with the production we're getting and that win against IU and IU, you're looking at it like, oh, maybe these key things are starting to work out. These things are starting to build off each other. And you're going to look now, not more this year and finishing the season. What can you build off with your young guys next year? And what can you actually make productive-wise? Uh, because this season, it's in the pooper. Throw it it's, in the books. It's in the trash because it's you're not you're not gonna make a bowl game at this rate. You're just looking at what you're gonna get from your younger guys, and I think it's time to start throwing those freshmen in, start getting those younger guys some experience because you're gonna need that in the longer run. So, yeah, I mean, definitely a lot of good takeaways from this season. Some good, a lot of bad, but some good. <laughs> uh, but moving into our last segment of the day, we have all chosen one standout <coughs> player that we're naming as our dogs of the week. Carter, you start us off. Who is your dog Actually, of the week? Actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass this one to the creator of this new segment, Alex Jackson here. He's going to explain to you what dog of the week is and the premise of what is a dog. And he's going to take it off with the first one. Hey, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Yay. <laughs> but let's get into it, man. Dog of the week. I, uh... You, you say I came up with it. I appreciate that. I appreciate the uh, the old nod of approval. But I don't know, man. I just think one day we say dog a lot. But what exactly makes a dog? I'll let you know. D-O-G? What do you think we hear? D-O-G? You're a little dog. I got a little dog at home. He's a Yorkie. He, he's a yapper. You know, whatever. <laughs> but when you think of dog, D-A-W-G, what do you think? Great Danes, pit bulls, big mutts. Just guys that are absolute beasts down there. They don't have to be perfect, but they are beasts. <laughs> so my dog of the week, let's get into it. <coughs> Can I get some, man? My dog of the week, Jackson Corville. He may not have been perfect. He may not have been perfect. Two for four from field goals. But he, game on the line. Bron Stark on the line. He comes through for the kids. Tell him. He comes through Tell for the him. kids. He's Woo. my dog. Hit him. Hit him. Oh, man, that's a lot. Thank you. Give you a round of applause That's, for that. That, was that great. deserves a lot. Great Thank you. I can't top that. I'll just go with my dog of the week, the big man, Bashir Jahab, the man in the paint, the brick wall. Three blocks. He led the team with 21 points. He was the man of the hour for me. 57% from the field. He is the new leader of Ball State basketball. Just look at that play. Look at it. Gonna get around him right there. Mm. Oh, oh. Hit. Hit him! Ooh. Hit him! Ooh. You're Strong too small. Finish. You ain't ready for yam time. Yam time! <laughs> it's yam time. Bashir Jahab. Hit him with him. Too small. Nobody's keeping up with him. He is my dog of the week. Bang. And I love it. I love it. Right, let me let me end us off strong here. My, Let's hit him, Jack. My dog Who of he the got? week is none other than freshman Mason Jones, baby. That man <laughs> tried to dunk on Three separate occasions. I love it. I love the energy. He was getting the entire crowd hyped up. I loved it. We love him. Mason, keep doing your thing. Keep getting us hyped. You're my dog of the week. Freshman, baby. Well, unfortunately, that's going to conclude today's episode of CSL Plus. Thank you to everyone who tuned in. Feel free to follow us on Instagram and X at BSU underscore CSL. And subscribe to our YouTube channel for Alex Jackson, Carter Campbell, and everyone else back in the studio, I've been your host, Jack Johnson. Thank you for watching, and so long from Muncie.